improve some of these um, uh, shortcut rules now, right? And then once you know how to do that, then we're going to go back and review and do some more problems where you have to symbolize, and then you will do a, a proof. Have you have you started it? Okay. So uh, you have to be fairly close. So you can't hear. Okay. Okay. The the audio is not so good. All right. So that's that's what we're doing. So that means that by next Monday you get the test. The test will be like some problems, symbolize them, give a proof or a counterexample. Be that simple. But you need to know how to do all that stuff. So we're going to do some some uh, more proofs now. You have gotten two types of arguments where you have to make assumptions. One is the conditional proof, and the other is the indirect proof, right? And I want to show you one more that the text doesn't go into, which I think is absolutely essential because it's so uh, intuitive and natural, and it's based upon the argument called a dilemma. Um, Abby, could you erase a bunch of this stuff for me, please? So I can, I've got some space here. So, dilemma is this argument here. P or Q, P then R, Q then R, what follows from that? It follows R, right? This is called dilemma. He went to the left or to the right? If he went to the left, he's dead. If he went to the right, he's dead. He's dead. Right? That's dilemma. Does that make sense? Now, the first task for the assignment is to prove this. How are you going to prove it? <laughs> How are you going to prove it? Sign. Thank you. Prove not R. And then what do I have to show? A contradiction. Okay? Make sure you're close enough that you can see it. Okay? So, uh, so how am I going to do that? What do I get from not R and these two things right here? Not P and not Q. I get not P and not Q. By assume P and then get a contradiction, so I get not P, right? And when I get not P, it's going to give me Q. But then I'm going to get not Q, I'm going to have a contradiction, it's going to work. Everybody see that? that? That's from last class, how to do that. Okay, now, once you have this rule of proof here, then you can do a thing that's called pr a proof by cases. Whenever you have a P and Q, what do you do in a proof? You uh, simplify it, right? You just get the P and get the Q. Now, when you have a P or Q, there's another strategy that you use, which is called, you go into a proof by cases. If I want to prove that my client was innocent, and I know that he was either at his mother's house or at his sister's house, and I want to prove you either way that he's innocent, I'm going to say, okay, take the first case. That's why it's called a proof by cases. Assume that he was at his mother's house. Now I'm going to prove that he was innocent. Now let's take the second case. Assume that he was at his sister's house. I'm going to prove that he was innocent. So what I know is that either way, and so by dilemma, I get to conclude that he was innocent. Does that make sense? So this is called a proof by cases. So if, I'm, if I've got P or Q here, and I'm trying to show box, and I'm going to show you the structure of how these proofs will look. P or Q, I'm trying to get box. So what I do is I assume P, and I'm going to show box. So I go down here at line 100, and I finally get P then box. Now what do I do? That's right. This one goes all like that and closes it up. So then I go 101, I assume Q, and what am I going to try to show? Box. Box. That's right. Okay, so now I go down to line 200 down here, and I finally get Q arrow box. And then 201 is what? Box. By dilemma, which is lines 1 and 101 and 200, right? And I got it. And that's how I did it. And that's called a proof by cases. All right? So 
let's show you some now. And, and now for the assignment, you've got some problems to do. You're doing some derived rules. You're gonna prove the derived rules. And, um, and then after you've proven them, then you'll get to use them all. But let me just give you one example. Let's say I have P or Q, and I have to show Q or P. Does that seem to you like that follows? What would you call that? Swap, okay. If you use mathematical terms, it would, no, okay. commutative. Be like, like one plus two is the same as two plus one, right? It's commutative. But how am I gonna show this? And what I want you to learn is to learn this proof by cases. If you see an or, you say, okay, I'm gonna assume the first case, I'm gonna get the result. Assume the second case, I'm gonna get the result. Do you see that? That's, that's doing it proof by cases. So what do I assume? P. P. And what am I going to show? The conclusion. Right? Just like I did over, just over here. I assume P or Q, I got to get box. So I assume P, I got to get box. That's the, that's the grid. So now I've got P. So how do I get Q or P? That's easy, right? Q or P by addition from line two. Okay, so I got it. Now why did I want to get that? No, 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 wait a second, so what do I get? Why did I assume P and I get that? What? I wanna show that either case, I'm gonna get the result. So I write P, then Q or P, and that's conditional proof, lines two to three. Okay, now what? Why? That's right. Exactly, I'm, I'm getting the second case. So I assume Q and I've got to get Q or P. How do I do that? Q or P by addition, and that's from line five. So I got it. So what do I do now? Q then Q or P by conditional proof lines five to six. Okay, now why did I want all that? Tyler, yeah? Mm, what is it called? Yeah, Randy, you got it. Somebody Hi. said it. Or is it Ina? Did you say it? Yeah. Who said it? Uh, what do I get now? Q or, Q. Q or P. Q or P. And what is that by? Dilemma. Dilemma. Thank you, cameraman. Dilemma <laughs> from lines what and what and what. By the way, Dilemma has three assumptions. So what is it from? It's line four, one, four, and seven. One, four, and seven. This says P or Q. This says if P, I get the result. This says if Q, I get the result. So I get the result. Okay, you see that? That's how that's proved. It's done in proof by cases. All right, so let's take a look at the, at the assignments then. Or, uh, keep going. What? Do you want me to keep yeah, going? Yeah, yeah, keep okay. going. Yeah, so back out, so no, no, no pans. So, okay, so look at the assignment here. So this is for Wednesday. <laughs> prove, prove dilemma using the basic rules. So that was one you need to do. Then prove five of the following using the basic rules and dilemma with the strategy of proof by cases. Commutation, the or version in one direction. We just did that right there. Do association. Where is association? Uh, if you look at the back of the, of the whole text, you'll find all these things back here. Association is uh, the or version. If the association is P or Q or R is the same as P or Q or R. Right? That's association. Think mathematics. It's association. How do you prove that thing? How do I show that from... P or Q or R, I can get P or Q or R. How am I going to do that? Understand this proof by cases thing and then just make it automatic like a habit. So I've got an or. What do I do when I have an or? Randy? P or Q. Oh, 
so what do I assume? This is an or, and what do I do when I have an or? Assume P, and what do I show? I show P or Q or R, that whole thing. And then I go all the way down here. Yeah, I'm gonna get it by addition a couple times, and right, and I'm finally gonna get it. And then what do I have to do? I have to assume Q or R, and what am I gonna show? Same thing, P or Q or R. I look at this and I say, I don't know how I'm going to do that. So how do I do it? Answer, proof by cases. So what do I do? I assume Q, and what do I get? P or Q or R, right? And then I assume R. So I've got a couple of proof by cases embedded within it. Does that make sense? Okay, good luck.